welcome to uh, 4.4 4.4b. We're finding the value of a trig function of any angle. Yesterday we looked at the special triangles and our unit circle. And we just want to add one thing to those notes from yesterday. We touched on it during the lesson, uh, but that is our quadrant. So our first quadrant here is our all quadrant. It's the all quadrant because all trig functions are positive between 0 and 90 or between 0 and pi over 2. Our second quadrant here is our sine quadrant and that's because sine and its reciprocal cosecant are positive in this quadrant all angles between 90 and 180 or between pi over 2 and pi. My third quadrant is my tangent quadrant, my T for tangent tangent and its reciprocal cotangent are positive between 180 and 270 degrees or between pi and 3 pi over 2. And finally my fourth quadrant is my C cosine quadrant. Cosine and its reciprocal secant are positive for all angles between 270 and 360 or between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi radians. Now that you have that in your notes, we're going to resume what we were work on, working on yesterday. But what you're going to notice is I made a slight change here. Uh, when I wrote the problem and started recording yesterday, I had the wrong angle here. And so I've changed that to 480, what it was intended to be. You're welcome to leave what you had in your notes and then just add one more of these to the bottom of your notes. And this will give us an angle that is on one of our special triangles. 40 degrees, you might notice, did not show up anywhere. So we want to do all of these for the types of trig functions that we'll actually see and be expected to be able to solve without a calculator. In the meantime, this provides a great opportunity to review what we did yesterday. First is finding the coterminal angle or angle between 0 and 360. I would do this by taking the angle and subtracting 360, which in this case will leave 120 degrees. Next, I would want to find the quadrant this lies in. I can use my 120, and I want to find which quadrant will this lie in. I always start here on the positive x-axis. I'm going to go up. 120 is more than 90, but not more than 180. So this is going to be somewhere. This is all students take calculus. This lies somewhere in my sine quadrant sine is positive there and its reciprocal cosecant is also positive there. So I know that sine or cosecant will be positive in this quadrant. Looking at that then I can determine what will my sine be, S-I-G-N, will this be positive or will this be negative? Because I'm finding sine in the sine is positive quadrant, my answer will be positive. And then finally I need to find my reference angle and that is how far is it from my terminal point to the x-axis? Since I'm left of the y-axis, I'm going to go down to 180. So I want to find what is my difference. What is my difference between, between 180, that's my x-axis, and 120, that's my trig function. And the difference or subtraction is 60 degrees. So this would be a 60 degree reference angle. So that's what we did yesterday. Today we're going to add uh, finding the correct triangle using the trig relationship and then simplifying, rationalizing, and adding the correct sign. Will it be positive or negative from back here? So starting with our triangle, what would be my correct triangle? This is 60 degrees, so I'd look back to reference. Again, eventually you need to have these memorized. But I have this 60 degree triangle. That means I want to use this triangle. I'm using the 60 degree. And you could write it one of two ways. You could go ahead and do it just like the notes there where the 60 degrees is up here. And my side is 1, radical 3, and 2. Or you could rotate this so that the 60 degrees is down here. But keep in mind the short side 1 is still next to the 60. The long side is still across from the 60. And the hypotenuse is still 2. You can use either triangle, but actually draw the triangle, label the angle, and label the three sides. Let's look at cosine negative 135. 
This is a reference angle of 45 degrees. So looking back, that would be this special triangle with 45 degrees, sides of 1 and 1, and a hypotenuse of radical 2. So I'm going to draw this little triangle in here. Probably use this one. 1, 1, radical 2, and this is my 45 degree angle. For tangent, this is pi over 4. I can look at my triangle again. This is my pi over 4 triangle, sides of 1, 1, and radical 2. So this triangle will be sides of 1, 1, and radical 2. And this is my pi over 4 angle. Now go ahead and select the appropriate triangle that you would use for this problem. You should have in your notes your coterminal angle, your quadrant, your sine, and most importantly your reference angle and you'll use the reference angle to select the correct triangle. Okay, next we're going to write our trig relationship. To do this, we're going to look back at what trig function am I finding. And remember our so ka toa or Oscar had a handful of acorns, whichever one works best for you. This is sine and sine would be opposite over hypotenuse. Well, which is opposite and which is hypotenuse? Here's my 60 degrees, opposite is radical 3. And my hypotenuse is 2. Go ahead and write, we'll write this a little bit neater, opposite over hypotenuse will be radical 3 over 2. And write that in. Write what the trig function is, opposite over hypotenuse, and then what value you get. So our trig identity and the value. Looking at cosine negative 135, this is cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Looking at my triangle, the adjacent, the side that's adjacent to 45 is 1, and my hypotenuse is radical 2. Looking at tangent pi over 4, tangent is opposite over adjacent. And then opposite of pi over 4 is 1. And adjacent to pi over 4 is also 1. Now you can go back to this cosecant. Cosecant is a reciprocal identity. It's reciprocal of sine. So if sine is opposite over hypotenuse, what would cosecant be? Write that here. And then fill in the values, which will go on the top and which will go on the bottom. And you'll be able to select that into questions at the end now. Okay, we're in the home stretch now. We're going to put it all together. There are three mini steps here in this last step, and that is to simplify and to rationalize as needed, and then to include our sign. Is it positive or negative? So this one was positive. I'm going to bring that over. Positive. I have radical 3 over 2. There's no fractions that need to be reduced. And my radicals in the numerator, that's OK. I can leave that in the numerator. And I get radical 3 over 2, positive. And that one's finished. Cosine of negative 135. This time, I still don't have anything to simplify. But my sine is negative. I'm going to bring that over. And I need to rationalize this. So 1 over radical 2 to rationalize. I'll multiply the top and the bottom by radical 2 and get radical 2 over 2. I don't have anything further to simplify here. I can't cancel the 2 inside the radical with the 2 outside the radical. So this one is done. Negative radical 2 over 2. Here I have tangent 11 pi over 4, and I have 1 over 1. That can be simplified and should be simplified to 1. I don't need to write it as 1 over 1 anymore. 1 over 1 will not be given full credit because that's not fully simplified. And my sign here was a negative, so my answer is negative 1. Finally, work cosecant negative 7 pi over 6. Bring your sign over from here. Simplify and rationalize if needed, and then you will have your final answer, which you can select at the end. 
Now the only thing left is to look at these special cases, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 0. So let's look at a few of these. Let's say sine pi over 2, uh, cosine 3 pi over 2, tangent 0, tangent pi over 2, and maybe cosecant pi. Here are a few examples we can use. And all of these are going to go to the unit circle, so we don't need the big long chart for these. If it's any 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, or we'll add cotangent 2 pi. Then we're going to use our unit circle that's these values here. We'll start with sine of pi over 2. I find pi over 2 on my unit circle, that's here, and I'm finding sine. Sine shows that it is 1, so I can say this equals 1. That's it. For number 2, cosine of 3 pi over 2. So I find 3, over, 3 pi over 2 down here, and cosine is the x-coordinate, so it's 0. Let's look at tangent of pi over 2. So here's pi over 2. Tangent is y over x or sine over cosine. Well, my y or my sine is 1. My cosine or my x is 0. 1 divided by 0, that is undefined. And tangent is slope, essentially, and the line going from 0 up through pi over 2 would be straight up and down. It would be a vertical line, and vertical lines don't have a slope. Their slope is undefined. We just found tangent of pi over 2, but I wrote the information up with tangent of 0. That actually goes down here. That would be y over x, which is 1 over 0, undefined. Let's go ahead and look at tangent of 0. Here's my 0. Tangent is y over x, or sine over cosine. This one is 0 over 1. 0 over 1 is fine. It is defined. Any 0 divided by anything is 0. Now we get into some reciprocal identities. Cosecant. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so 1 over sine. I can see here that sine equals 0. So this is going to give me 1 over 0. Cosecant is undefined at pi. And finally, cotangent, you're going to try on your own. Find 2 pi, and cotangent will be the fundamental identity cosine over sine, or x over y. And you'll use that to find cotangent if it's defined. If it's not defined, you'll choose undefined. And that's it.